This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Baruch Hashem. We're very lucky very lucky that the Creator chose us to, to shine His light on His creation and every one of us many souls depends on our holy work in our good effort and we're very lucky and blessed to be those messengers of the Creator on earth. The person is going through a process of we'll call it humiliations in life and every person goes through those hard and difficult hours and in those hours the Creator is checking something very special, very unique. Are you a real prince? the son of the king or that you are just a slave that is pretending to be a prince who you really are you can look at yourself and to be seen to your own eyes as a slave so low and so broken and so poor working for free sweating for free, breaking your fingers for someone else's wealth and success and you're a slave but your heart is a live heart and then by that you realize you are a real prince even though that you fell into that place that you don't realize yet how close you are to the Creator and from the other side the person can pretend to be the Prince looks good, wealthy drives his uh, fancy car wearing his new suits, whatever but inside he's rotten like low pathetic person and can show off with golden necklaces and golden bracelets and whatever like showing off like yeah. in reality so poor poor in his mind weak every lust every desire pulls him like doesn't have no self-control, no divine desires, not willing to, to force himself to work, to serve the Creator, to nullify himself to the will of heaven. Doesn't set no huge goals in life, just like empty. The real children of the Creator, those ones that inside their hearts there is a holy flame of fire, a pillar of fire that walks in front of the camp of our holy nation are the humble ones, those righteous ones, those ones that will always be ready to sacrifice themselves for the good of others, will not humiliate others, will put their heart and their mind into making other people's life happy and joyful will care. Those that has a heart inside of themselves, those are the real princes, those are the real children of the Almighty. Now this world is basically a twilight zone, it's a gray area full with illusions 
and lights and colors are playing in mixture in a blend and blur way that many times you can mistake and not recognizing the real truth of heaven and you can think to yourself, hey, I know the way everything looks perfect, looks simple, looks good. I know what I'm doing. You heard lectures, people are saying, learn Torah. You heard, you need to go and pray in the Minyan. You've been strong on that thing. And you go and you think that you're doing great. But in the middle of your life, suddenly the Creator can shake you, open your eyes. And makes you realize how far you are from the truth. You can pretend for many years. You can live in that fake dream of fake reality. Of lies. Of mistakes. That you lied to yourself for years, for decades. On being good, on being okay, on being perfect, on doing the best that you can. When in reality... You haven't even started your process of tshuva, your process of purification, of coming closer to the will of heaven to really recognize His will and to follow His will no matter what He will tell you, no matter what He will say. Think about our world. Think about earlier generations. Think about the generation of the Tanaim, of the Amoraim. Think about the generations of our forefathers. How can it be that Mashiach didn't came yet? How can it be that after the Holocaust Mashiach didn't came? How can it be? How can it be that in the generation of Rabbi Akiva, when Rabbi Akiva and nine of his friends went to die to make Hashem's name holy and great, how can it be that after the destruction of the temple, people haven't woke up enough? How can it be? Their souls were so pure, those people were so righteous, those six million Jews and <laughs> like... Mm, mm, only Russians died in the Second World War. More than 50 million Russians died. 20 million gypsies been killed. 6 million Jews been killed in the Holocaust. You're talking about sick amounts of, of innocent people, of children, that been slaughtered, that been thrown in the mud and, and, and died in hunger and poverty been abused, been destroyed, been humiliated, like the creation went through such a crush. And more nations and more people, not only those numbers, more and more and more, like millions and millions of people died. How can that bloodshed not be enough for the redemption to come? How can you explain it? Unless... We still lack of something. Blood is not the answer. Tears, not the answer. There were enough tears. Enough tears, for sure. Enough tears. No more tears. Tears won't help. Cry, go cry. Nothing will help. You can cry for months. I cried for months. It doesn't help. <laughs> You're just like, okay. Like, dry your tears and like, take yourself together. Hold yourself. Get stronger. And like, all right, let's start working crying and people are dying and plagues until today and people are dying even today on in thousands from plagues from diseases from illnesses from people are committing suicides people are suffering like what's going on <laughs> where are we holding right <laughs> it's a question <laughs> what the heck i'll tell you it's simple even though that those early generations, they were very, very pure. And their purity was depend in many things. Part of their purity and their holiness was because of the greatness of their souls. But there is another aspect to look at it. We know that the souls are coming down to the, way, to the world in that shape of a tree. 
the oak of life. And first of all, we had the main trunk that was Adam and Eve. And after them, we had the souls that came out of them. And they were the first very thick branches, strong, connected to the root. And they received the, 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 the main part of the soul and the light was still in them, very strong and shining. And the second generation, third, fourth, fifth, like still like we're talking about gigantic souls, like real noble souls, like really illuminating souls. Now, compared to, other, to ours, that we are like those tiny branches that are barely holding on. And you can see your nature that you're barely holding on. Like, why, one day you think like, hey, this wind can, can blow me away. Like I can just like fly in a minute. Like you, you don't know if you're holding, if you're already out. Like all the time you feel like you're about to break. That's the nature of our souls. And why? Because we're in the edge. Because we're in the end. Because we are those tiniest branches in the end of that gigantic oak of life. But the earlier generations, those forefathers, the ancestors, the, the holy tribes of Israel and the Tanaim and the Amoraim, the, 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 the children of, of Moses and his people that went out of Egypt, all, like, all those, they were still very, very powerful and very, very strong. So in a way we can understand that their greatness is also coming by the fact that they were closer to the beginning, to Adam and Eve. And on that there is a huge and known concept that is called Yeridat Hadorot, that the generation are going lower and lower with time. This is a known thing, getting weaker. They have lack of energy, not the same energy that our, the earlier generations were holding. And therefore, they were very, very strong. But, how can it be that Mashiach, if they were so righteous and so pure, and if we look at ourselves, and for sure we can understand that we're very, very far from their purity. Like, we can't hold our mind for, for a minute, like for 30 seconds, like really to be focused on something, like, no chance. Like, it, it doesn't work like that anymore. In our, like, today, I don't know, like, Everyone are crazy. Like, literally, like, I'm crazy. Like, me, myself, for sure, I know I'm crazy. Like, Bo Hashem, I'm not on medications, but I'm crazy. Like, I can handle it, but like, freaking out. <laughs> like, you know yourself. Like, between you to yourself, like, you're crazy. You're like, you're getting angry, and you lose your mind, and like, yo, what's going on here? And like, everything is like, boiling you from within. Like, so, it, it's, it's sick, it's sickness, it's a problem, okay. Like, going to the mikveh, whatever, doesn't help. Go to the synagogue, okay, doesn't help. Continue, like, trying, crazy, like, nothing works. But you're continuing. So, how can it be that the Creator will even expect people like us, that we know ourselves, that we are like barely holding on and just like trying to, to, holding, to hold together and to, and to make it happen somehow and on and on and on. How can it be that Mashiach will come for us? Like, how can it be? You can say because of Hashem's mercy, whatever, but like there must be a certain work, a certain effort, a certain merit that will belong to us that based on that, Mashiach will come and re redeem us. That Hashem will come and reveal His glory on us. Now, what is that? So, like we said, and even though that the earlier generations were greater souls in their measure, in their size, in their power, in their energy, because of the fact that they were closer to the first generations, to the beginning, because of the same reason that they were earlier than us, they were also closer to the sin, to the beginning of darkness and for the reason of exile. 
Now we, even though that we are in a way losing our energy, losing our wisdom, losing our stability, losing our happiness, losing our, our, our knowledge, forgetting and whatever, still we are like that tiny midgen that stands on the head of the giant. And even if we are so tiny and weak and fragile, we're still coming to this world in a later generation that already inherit and received huge amounts of understandings and developments and skills and conclusions that we are using them on daily basis. Like that's who we are. For us, certain things that are clear and simple were very, very far from the deep understandings of earlier generations and not because of the progress and not because of the culture and not because of the um, uh, m- m- modernization there is a word like that society, yeah. society not because of people because that our souls are really ancient souls even though that we are now here and you don't remember who you are in the roots of your soul because you came again in another lifetime into a new body and when a child when it comes to the world immediately he forgets who he is and he forgets where he came from and he forgets everything and he's like so traumatized from the birth that like he's not realizing anything anymore and that's it he's just like crying and then he wants to go to sleep like leave me alone like can't handle it anymore, like it's too much, way too much, all angry and upset, like no way, don't want that, no, I want to go back. (laughs) And now, now we need to wait 70 years, 80 years, no, 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 you're here, wait. So even though that we don't remember who we are and our real legacy means the real nature of our souls, that we were here in many lifetimes and that our souls are souls that came out of that old ancient oak of life. We don't remember that, but the wisdom and the life experience of the soul is eternal and it's treasured inside of us. So sometimes you don't know how to pull it out, sometimes you don't know it, but it really lives inside of you. And it brings us to that place that our actions today are much more precise and aimed to the divine will of the Creator than in earlier generations. Even if they were able to sit on the Torah for much, much more, many, many more hours than us and to be much more focused and they carved the way for us. They, they made it happen for us to succeed and to live. They passed the torch of wisdom from one generation to the next. They kept the tradition. They gave us the tools and the power to do. But today, we are those ones to score. And even if you're so tiny and weak, that is your costume. That is your armor, your scars, and the filth that is covering you, and the fact that no one suspects you to be that righteous one to go and save the world. That gives you the tools, the power to complete the mission. Because no one even, no, no one's scared of you. Like, who's going to be scared of you now? The devil, the angel of death that already executed six millions in Germany. The one that was able to kill Rabbi Akiva. The one that took Rabbi Nachman of Breslev when he was 39. The one that took Arya Kadosh after one hour, one year and a half with Rabbi Chaim Vital. The one that was able to overpower all the righteous people. Now he's going to be scared of you. You're a walking joke. Hashem is looking at you and like, Hashem is praying for your success, like Hashem don't know what to do, like you're so shaky and stoned and and drunk, walking like a zombie in the street. The devil, the Yetzirah, the angel of death, the, the, the ancient snake, like he's not scared of you, why? Because you're so covered with filth, and I'm talking about myself, like I'm like me, okay, let's talk about me. 
so deep into that darkness, so deep into the nonsense, so far from purity, from holiness, from all the good qualities of a righteous man, a holy man, that one that you will describe or are going to read about in books, so far from those achievements, from those heights, that like you yourself don't even recognize yourself. So like... Who's going to be scared of a soldier that forgot his weapon in the bar? Okay, like, a soldier. So what, you have a w- uniform, all right, so you dress black and white. So okay, you have a tzitzit, okay, so you keep Shabbat. So all right, yeah, so he's clapping, but he's not scared of you. But the real thing is that suddenly, in one moment, you're going to come to that right conclusion, and you're going to be so deep behind the lines of the enemy, that you're going to be able to save that lost princess and to bring her home. Like in a minute. You, we, me, been blended so well in the nations, we're so lost, we're so over there, we're so out there, that everyone thinks that we lost our way. And even we think that we lost our way. But suddenly, in one moment, you're going to be sober. Yeah, just like you're going to wake up one morning and say, Hey, what's going on here? Like, that's it. From now on, I'm like doing it. And like, even if you're going to forget everything, and you're not going to remember anything, and you won't even know how to do it, all the wisdom that's been treasured in your mind, in your soul for generations, for thousands of years, gonna back you up, gonna stand up for you. And suddenly you're gonna find yourself battling and winning that war and bringing redemption. With all your tiredness, with all your sadness, with all your depression and your anxieties, with all your scars and bleeding wounds, with all your pain of loss and loneliness, with all your sorrow and pain and all all your fears and angers and bad attributes, suddenly you're going to rise from the dust, from the earth, from the ground, from the swamps of despair, and you're going to start working hard and you're going to make the change. And it's going to be us. It's going to be those ones that recognize inside of themselves, hey, I'm not a simple person. Inside of me there is a fire, a flaming fire. Now, I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to work with it. I don't know what to do with it. I don't have a clue how it got there in the first place. But what do I know? I know that it's in it, in me, and it's in it to win it. Like I'm going to use it. And that's the power of that Israeli soul. That the tribes of Israel, it's a secret. And the world is not ready to understand it. Like no one is able to get that thing at all, at all not. That the 12 tribes been separated to two divisions. One went with King David and the other one went lost. Ten holy tribes disappeared. Now, in reality, there are no differences between us that we are called today Jewish from the tribe of Judah to our siblings from the tribe of Zvulun, of Menashe, of Issachar, of Gad, of Asher, of Naphtali, like they're brothers, like there is no, we're siblings, we're, we're the same. But where are they? Behind the mountains of darkness, like go call them, they won't answer. Tell them, hey brother, like nothing. You're talking to me, like, gonna break it to pieces. Like, he's not your friend. Like, who do who you think you're talking? Who are you calling brother? Like, what are you talking about? He, he doesn't remember who he is. Go to knock on his door. Tell him, listen, you're my brother. We're from the same father. Like, like, like it's dangerous, you know. Don't do that. It's, it's crazy. Like, you know, he's in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, he's in, in, in Tibet, he's in, in China. He's like, you don't know who you're talking to. Like, he, he, he's a farmer somewhere, he's a warrior somewhere, like, he's a shepherd. Like, he, he drives trucks like crazy with an automatic weapon in Colombia. Like, you don't know who he's, like, it's crazy. Like, it's wild. And he has five wives and 17 children and doesn't know the names even. Like, he's driving all drunk. Like crazy, like 
You're talking about Israeli souls, like bullies, right? Strong, powerful people, like that are fighting, and like, but they don't know who they are. But in one moment, <laughs> one moment, one prayer of Mashiach, Mashiach is crying to Hashem. Yes, Mashiach is a broken person. Mashiach is going always down, always broken, always. Like, he's suffering from our sins. Like, it's a broken as hell person. Broken, broken, broken. Shredded, grinded to dust. A most humble person that you can imagine. And like, ask yourself, what is humbling me? Like, what brought me to my humiliation to be humble? Only the, the accidents, right? Only the failures, only the shames, only the disappointments, only the downs. The success is, is the failure of my life. Like where I made it, where I succeeded, that, that's where I failed, like basically. But where I failed, and it was clear fail, failure, there was my rising, there was my success. Over there I've been humbled. There I found connection. There I found my humility. I realized, okay, Hashem is with me. I need to work on myself. There I started my process when I realized that I'm a zero. So if he's so humble, trust me, we're talking about someone that is like closer to the ground than more than everyone else. The humblest person in the world, that's Mashiach. Now when that broken Mashiach will say to Hashem, Itbarach, Ana Hashem, Moshiach, Ana, Anna Hashem, please Hashem, you promised, please Father in heaven, open our eyes, open our hearts, redeemed us already, and on, and his prayer will be accepted, suddenly a spirit will go and purify the world from four wings of the universe, all the lost souls, lost, what do you mean lost? That we lost them, that we lost track on them, that we couldn't recognize them anymore, that they themselves don't remember their fruits, cookies, drinks, like everything, like feel free. That they themselves cannot recognize their glory, how holy and great their souls are. Suddenly that spirit of Mashiach will hover all the darkness away from them, will blow it away from them, and suddenly you're going to see them all standing tall and high and happy and proud and with a goal and with a purpose and knowing exactly what they're doing, and you won't be able to, to, to fool them with imaginations that were 100% of their life one hour before. Suddenly, you're going to have a group, gigantic group. We're talking about billions of people, hundreds of millions of people that are all the lost souls of Israel. And they are, I want to say out there, but they're like here. They're like, it's, it's here. It's us. We're also lost. You know that you're lost. You recognize the fact that you're lost. You don't know what to do with yourself. You can't find happiness, even if like... Everything is perfect and you lose your mind. So like you, like you see that you yourself is lost, you have other souls that are even in worse places than yours. And all those souls are about to wake up. Now for people that are too arrogant to understand it, that the redemption that will come will be the most beautiful thing that ever took place in the world. People don't even understand what the redemption is all about, what will happen. What that will happen in that moment is that Jerusalem will rise above the ground. Like all nature will show the glory of the Creator. The earth will move. Like understand it, picture it to yourself in your mind. All the creation in one moment becomes one unit to serve Hashem. Like we were praying in Rosh Hashanah and in Yom Kippur. The same words that we're asking for thousands of years to take place, all those prayers that we are piling for generations will be answered in one moment. And suddenly everything will be open. Like you're talking about highways in, in the width of, of, of miles. You're talking about billions of cars driving, like 
trucks and, and delivering whatever is needed for the redemption, for the salvation. You're talking about horses on the sides of the mountains that are all running, all the animals. You're talking about white deers that are coming from Colorado toward Jerusalem. You're talking about animals coming out of their holes. They're not scared anymore. You're going out of your house and you see smiling creation. Foxes and dogs and cats and sheep and goats. Everyone are happy, like the world is shining, kids are playing, everyone has a new ball and new bikes and everyone are happy. You like the sea, you go to the sea, you see dolphins, all the animals are coming to you. Whatever you want, you see with your eyes, the geese, all the birds, everyone are together and everything is going and streaming to Jerusalem, to Yerushalayim, the holy city, and it's rising. And Jerusalem is rising to places that you can never imagine. All the path, all the way, all the lanes that are bringing you to Jerusalem are the most beautiful ways and views that you've ever seen in your life. But when you are stepping into the Holy Land of Israel, like you, you, you can't imagine that feeling. It's not like today you're going in the Malatufa Ben Gurion and you look around and it's like, all right, what, what exactly are, am I doing here? Like, okay, oh, Jerusalem, okay. And you go, old city, and you look, okay. And now what? Oh, Western Wall, okay. And then you're standing and you feel some vibe over there. And yes, it's a different feeling, but like, it didn't happen yet. The redemption did not take place yet, and therefore you cannot feel it yet. Even if you can feel some, you open the book, you learn Torah, you go to the mikveh, you keep Shabbat. Yes, you can feel some. You can feel some drops of sparks of holiness, of purity in, in, in good, inspiring conversations with between friends, in moments of inspiration between people. Yes, some, you can see some glory, you can see some light, but... That's darkness of the exile complete, com compared to the redemption. When the redemption will come, what that we will see with our eyes is the glory of the Creator and all creation means every brick in, and every wall will show the heavenly power that makes it exist. The walls will sing, the ground, all the flowers will bloom, all the trees will bring out fruits. You're talking about millions of different kinds of fruits. Every tree that today doesn't have fruits will bring out new fruits. That's what will happen in the redemption. Everyone, everyone are walking to Jerusalem. We're talking about billions of people with one goal, Everyone wants to come and to see the Creator and to call Him in His name and to bow to Him. And everyone believes in the holy nation of Israel and everyone appreciating their glory. And there are no arguments anymore. There is no jealousy. There are no more fights, no more envious, no more anger, nothing. No more sadness. Everyone are happy. And this is something that, like, we need to believe in that. I live in that moment for years already. Like, I can't understand how it didn't happen yet, but that's why I'm going and talking. Because that is the meaning that there is a Creator. That's the meaning. The fact that there is a meaning is not that I need to obey and I need to listen and I need to follow. There is a Creator, and if I'm not going to do what Hashem told me to do, He's going to kick me out, He's going to punish me, I'm going to finish in hell, I'm not going to have a share in the world to come. Like, ask me, who cares about those nonsense? Like, you have time to think about those nonsense? You waste a minute of your life to talk Lashon Ara about Hashem? That's what you're doing? You waste your time on describing the King of all kings, the Almighty, the life source of creation, the beauty and the glory, the mercy, the, the, like all good in a negative shade, in a horrible way, like He is the judgment. There are judgments, and you know why there are judgments in the world? For a certain one reason, to respect Hashem. 
There are angels that made out of black clouds and thunders and lightnings and they have anger and fire in their eyes because they cannot stand lack of respect to the king. That's the reason why there are judgments in the world. Because they are so, like, they understand the greatness of the Creator. They love Him, they admire Him, and therefore they will not let no one to disgrace heaven, and they are fighting for that cause. They've been created by the Creator to go and defend. They are the, the defenders of the crown. They are the defenders of His glory. They are those ones to protect His name, that no one will disgrace Him, and on and on and on. So judgments are hitting the world, okay? But it doesn't mean now that the Creator is upset, that Hashem is not loving. The Creator is the Father of mercy. Meaning of the word mercy is that He gives and loves even those ones that are not worthy to be redeemed and to be saved, like us. He loves us in unconditional love. And when His glory will open, will be revealed to the world, all the creation means all the creations will show who gives them the power. So all the animals will sing all their songs with all their amazing voices and will spread and open their wings and will show their colors. And everyone will enjoy it. All the food will be served and all the traffic, everything, all the roads, all the lanes, all the, the sides of the mountains, everything will be ready. You're going to walk out of your house to the most magnificent view sites that you could ever imagine in your life. Everything, every detail will be perfect for you. And you will just have one will in your heart to go and, and, and to accept it. To become one, to be united with that glory, with that beauty. Just to say Amen on that. Just to say Amen. Just to say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Just to say those words. That will be the purpose of your life. And to every direction you will look, you will see your beloved ones. You will see the ones that you want to see in every moment of that journey. And you know, I said it already a few times. How many years, how much time it's going to take that path of, of just like enjoying an endless joy. One thousand years with no death we're talking about immortal life we're talking about eternal life we're talking about billions of people that not gonna visit grave that go not gonna die they're not gonna be buried that not gonna have funerals that no one gonna cry for them you're talking about a generation that is about to redeem to be redeemed to be redeemed means to become one with the Almighty in flesh, in body. To be purified completely. To be healthy and sound and strong. And to go and to do amazing things. If you know how to sing, you're going to sing to Hashem. If you know how to cook, you're going to cook to Hashem. If you know how to learn, you're going to teach, you're going to learn. If you know how to dance, you're going to dance like crazy. Like you're going to dance... It's going to be fantastic. Every person will have his power. He will have his opportunity. Be why? Because there are going to be people that will go out from their houses in Manhattan. And you're going to have people that will go out of their tents in Saudi Arabia. You're going to have people going to Jerusalem from four wings of earth. So all the lanes and all the ways and all the paths supposed to be ready for all of us to become one together. It means that everyone will give from their qualities, from their talents to the redemption. Everyone will do, will give his share. Everyone will participate in a way that he will want to, that he will feel, all right, that's my thing. I'm going to do that. Well, I'm going to make new amazing animation and going to broadcast it on huge screens on the sides of the way. And all those videos and all that will show the greatness of the Creator. And people will walk and there are going to be movies. Like it's going to be alive. 
If you will want to fly, you will be able to fly. If you will feel like swimming, you're going to swim that way. You're going to swim with dolphins toward Jerusalem. Whatever you will dream of will take place in your life. Now that, for me, that's worth living. That's life. For that, we're surviving for thousands of years. Not for not being punished. It's crazy. Like for me to think that I need to serve because I'm scared not to be punished. Like I'm sorry. I'm not scared of that. I want to argue. Like I, I'm, I'm ready. Like tell me that you want to punish me. I'll, I'll, I have some things to say. Like I remember once I went to do it but they do it at night. And I remember that I had a complaint on a certain like way of leadership of a certain rabbi in our generation. Like, I had an issue with him. Like, the, um, the truth. Like, you don't want me to lie, right? There is a Sefer Torah here, I hope. Like, you don't want me to lie. I had a problem with that person. Like, really, in my mind, in my life, I, like, I saw lackings. And like, I wanted to talk to, to my Creator, to Father in Heaven, on, on, on him. I want to complain. And I went and I started talking. I start saying, listen, Hashem, like Father in Heaven, He's doing this and He's doing that. And like, what's going on? It's not right. That's not how it's supposed to be. And I know that I'm not someone to say, but like, I j- just look, look, in reality, that's what has happened to me in our lives. And suddenly I felt fear. I felt scared. Voices in my mind told me, are you talking about Him? Are you sure that you're ready to talk about... So I said, look, I felt like I'm being terrorized. I felt like I'm being like, forced to, to close my mouth. And I didn't plan to. I had things to say. I said, look, even if you're going to kill me now, in heaven, I'm going to continue my speech. <laughs> Because it's the truth. So let's now get rid of all those like threatenings, all those like being bullied, bullied each other, all right? Like, let's, let's skip distance and you do your job and I'm going to do mine. You say your truth and I'll say mine and Hashem will decide and Hashem will judge between us. We're not enemies. You claim to say the truth. I claim to say the truth. Let's say our words. Once I drove in a cab, a taxi in Jerusalem to the Western Wall. It was a Muslim driver, Palestinian, I assume. He drove and we talked and he told me his faith and I told him my faith. And then I told him, you know what? If you're so strong and that's your belief and you really believe that Allah wants to give you the Holy Land of Israel and you want to call it Palestine, I said, okay, that's your belief, I hear you. Go pray for it. Go call him. Go to Allah and scream to Allah five times a day and beg for his mercy to be revealed. And if really you own that land, it will be yours. If really in heaven it's written under your name, it's yours. Go claim it. Cry to Allah, pray to Allah, beg to Allah, request Allah, and do whatever. You say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar will answer your prayers. I don't mind. <laughs> If you believe in Allah, go pray to Allah. I don't mind. I call Hashem, and I beg to Hashem, and I cry to Hashem, and I hope to Hashem. And if the land belongs to me, I will receive it, even if you will refuse to give it to me. It's not in our hands. It's in the hands of the real God. It's in the hands of the Creator. So everyone should go and be honest with his faith and to go and call his God. Like that all the sailors that were shipping in the same boat, in the same uh, ship with, with Yonah the prophet, everyone was calling their gods. In the end, no one of those gods answered their prayers and, and except of one. So then they all decided, all right, we're going to follow that one. So every, you have faith, you, okay, so go with your faith and go and call. I don't mind. When people are coming to me and asking me, should I convert, should I become Jewish? I answer everyone, no. Why? For what? For which reason? You want to believe in Hashem? You can believe in Hashem. Why do you need now to put a yoke on your back, on your shoulders? No. 
If you feel I want to convert, for me there is no other way, I found my destiny, all right, I'm not going to stop you, go ahead, go for it, make it, succeed, I'll, I'll help you, whatever you need. But as a goal in life to convert, to become Jewish, for what? For what? What's the purpose? Do you want to know Hashem? Okay, sit and learn, talk to Hashem, and you're going to know Hashem. You don't need to be Jewish to know Hashem. I'll show you hundreds of thousands of Jews that don't have a clue about Hashem. Don't have no understanding about Hashem. And they're Jewish from birth and don't know anything. So what? Is it making them to be better than someone else? No. You're Jewish. You're born to be Jewish. Great. You, you are something else. So you are who you are. Now you want to search the truth? Go search for the truth. You're going to find it. You don't need to be Jewish to find the truth. That's a mistake. You need to want the truth and then you'll find it. Hashem is close to everyone who calls him with truth. Karov Hashem lechol korav, lechol asher ikreu bemet. That's it. Call him with truth. Hashem will answer you. The real God, however you want to call him, you want to call him the cosmos. I have a friend that told me, listen, I converted to do Judaism. He was, was, was Christian. And he said, and I believe in Hashem, and I don't believe in Jesus, and I believe in the Torah, and he's a real convert. Like 100% took on himself the, the yoke of heaven by the Jewish way, 100%. But he told me, but I have a question for you, please. I told him, welcome, ask. I'm a Baal Tshuva. What's a Baal Tshuva? What does it mean? That you own the answer. A Baal Tshuva, he owns the answer. Ask me, I'll reply, I'll answer. He asked me, I told him, listen, oh, he asked me, what's the question? He said, listen, when I was Christian, I was praying to Jesus and I was being answered. That's my problem. I saw miracles. I was calling Jesus and I saw like wonders, like things happened in my life. Like I, 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 I'm not claiming that it was him. I don't think that it was him, but I want to tell you. In reality, when I was Christian, I was praying to Jesus and I saw miracles in my life. How can you explain that? So I told him it's easy. Hashem is so humble, he doesn't care how you call him. Hakol muktaru mugash lishmi. In the end, all the sacrifices, in the end, all the prayers are rising to one place. Now that person will call him Allah, Allah, Allah. If he's calling from honest heart, from a pure place, he's asking for mercy, Hashem will answer his prayer. If he's calling him the Lord, he's calling him Jesus, he's calling him Krishna. I don't know, I don't care how he calls him. If he's a poor person that with an honest heart calling heaven for help, the Creator doesn't need now respect and no, 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 how are you talking? You should call me in my name. Or, Hashem is not like that. Hashem is humble. Moshe learned his humility from Hashem. Hashem is more humble than Moses. Now if you're going to mistake Moses and going to call him Aaron, you think he won't answer you? He wouldn't care. He wouldn't mind. Like, yes, my child, what do you want? How can I help you? Like, he doesn't care how you called him. People doesn't know the real nature of the Creator. That he only loves. That he only cares. Now people mistake to think that the judgments that are taking place in the world are Hashem's will. That that's Hashem's will. But in reality, the Creator Himself, He is a prisoner with us in this creation. Like that it's written, Melech Asur Berhatim. That He is a king that is chained to the edges of our minds. Means that wherever you go, Hashem is going with you. If you're silly, if you're not wise, Hashem is stuck with you. If you're wiser, Hashem is with you. If you became a genius, a holy and pure mind, and you see the world, Hashem will show you the world. Hashem will open for you gates that never been seen before. Hashem is walking with you. Because Hashem tied Himself to the edges, to the peaks of our minds, of our thoughts. Birhite mochin, to the highest and most gentle peaks of our brain, of the way that we think. And there Hashem is tied to us, 
connected, handcuffed to us. And with the righteous ones, Hashem is leading the world like that it's written in the Gemara that Hashem is saying Tzadik Moshe Yirat Elokim the interpretation of that verse that a righteous man controls the fear of heaven of the Creator what does it mean? That Hashem is asking who leads me? Who controls me? The righteous man. That when the righteous man is praying a righteous person, a humble person is calling heaven, is calling Hashem Hashem is following His will. Hashem will fulfill His requests. Now Hashem is with us and we need to bring the redemption because the prisoner cannot release himself from prison. He needs someone else to untie him, to release him. So we need to release him in our mind. Because he is stuck in the prison of our low self-esteem, in our low faith, with the fact that we don't believe in the redemption. For us, the redemption is something that, like that our ancestors, three or four thousand years ago, were waiting for it, and it took five thousand years until now, and nothing happened. We are in the same condition in our mind. In our mind, the redemption is not possible. Tell me, is it possible? Do you see the squirrels standing in lines in the entrance to your house when you walk out with your lady? Do you see like all penguins swimming from Antarctica to toward the, 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 the Jerusalem? Like, like everyone, everyone, like all the animals. Do you see that? Do you believe in that? That the sheep will live with, with, with the wolf? And, uh, and, and, and a deer will, will, will live with, with, with a tiger, with a, with a, with a leopard. Like, like, do you see that? That you wish to, to climb on the back of a lion and, and he's taking you like for the next few miles until you... Oh, my best friend, thank you, lion. And you go to meet your friend and, and, and now you're sk- ice skating. If that, like, whatever you want. All the inspiration of all people that had hopes in thousands of years of exile came from that place. All those ones that made the Disney fantasy movies, all those ones that are the rebels of the empire against the empire in Star Wars, all those ones that are saving the hobbits, the the, the ones that are hitchhiking in the galaxy, all those ones that had some kind of hope, Jews and not Jews, holy tribes of Israel, different souls that had been blessed by heaven, like that Hashem promised Abram, Becha, in you, will be blessed all families on earth. All families on earth. All families on earth. Children of Moses, we're talking about two huge, gigantic, enormous tribes, Children of Moses never entered the Holy Land of Israel. They went back with Zipporah, Moses' wife, back to Jethro's camp in the desert of Sinai. And they have been lost. Where are they? No one knows. Do you think that Hashem forgotten about them? Yeah. Let's say, Hashem, He doesn't care about Moses' children. Yeah. No, Moses, you were pure. You're going to have a share in the world to come. Your children, nah. No, sorry. They can't come in. They're not Jewish. Do you think so? No. No. Hashem, he has the power to collect one drop of water that fell into the ocean 5,000 years ago. And we all drank it in different cups until today. And Hashem knows how to bring it back together. Hashem has that power. And this is why Hashem, He is the one that we're saying on Him, Mekabetz Nidcha Amo Yisrael, that He will gather all those lost ones, Shelo Yidach Mimeno Nidach, that there will be no one left behind. One will not be left behind. One, 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 one. The tiniest one will not be forgotten. The tiniest one. 
The one that we cannot recognize as Israeli at all. The one that we cannot recognize at all as one of the children of Abram. After Sarah passed away, Abram married another woman. And that woman had many children. And all those children been blessed by Abram and received gifts from him and went to their ways. Where are those children? Oh, they're not Jewish. They're not Jewish. Yeah. Are you Jewish? Are you Jewish to talk like that on the children of Abram? Do you appreciate your father? Do you know the tears that Abram cried when Sarah told him to, to, to send away his son Ishmael? You know what happened to him when Sarah told him that she doesn't want his son to stay in the house? Do you know how sad and broken he was? Can you imagine the pain of Abram that he had such a pure heart that one of his children had to go out from the house? Oh, it wasn't Isaac. Oh, we're the children of Yitzchak. We're just stupid and arrogant. That's what we are. We don't understand the heart of our father. Our father, he loves his children. He doesn't care if the name of his child is Ishmael, or if the name of his child is Esav, or if the name of, of, of his child is different. He loves his children. Like the Creator loves his children. Now you're Jewish. Fantastic. Show me. Like, let's see where, where your money is. Like, let's see, let's see you behave like one. Let's see you work like one. Let's see you act like one. Let's see you become a light to the nations. Let's see you use the gift that you've been blessed with to hold the Torah, to know the rules, to have all those verses in your mind. Let's see you go and coach and teach the world the light of faith. Let's see you go and create the path for the Creator to walk, for Mashiach Tzidkenu to walk. Let's see you building Jerusalem. Let's see you. You're Jewish, right? <coughs> Put your money where your mouth is. I'm Jewish, all right? Welcome, welcome. I want to see your actions. I want to see your Jewish soul shining in the world. Where is it? Oh no, terrified, lost, confused. And of course, don't talk about money, right? Money. I don't remember the name of that righteous man, but there was a righteous man that was calling everyone tzaddik, righteous. He would call everyone, all his students, everyone, oh tzaddik, 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 everyone that came, tzaddik, tzaddik, tzaddik. Tzaddik means righteous. He called everyone righteous. One day, one of his students came to him and told him, listen, Rabbi, you are righteous, and I'm righteous, and I have a daughter, and you have a son. So let's make a shidduch. <laughs> What's the problem? Our children can marry, right? You call me righteous, right? Yeah, yeah, you're righteous. And you're righteous for sure. No one is doubting your holiness. So let's make a shidduch. So the rabbi told him, listen, you're going to marry to tzaddikim like you, and I'm going to marry to tzaddikim like me. <laughs> All good. <laughs> Tzaddik. <laughs> Stay in your place. Everything is good. So I'm asking you, are you a real tzaddik? If you're a real tzaddik, if you claim to be righteous, I want to see that. The world is waiting for you. We need you to lead millions of people. We need you to open the eyes of Israel. We need you to open the hearts of billions of people that are truth seekers, that went lost and don't have no clue what to do with their lives. Are you a strong person? Are you claim to be connected? I want to see. Let's see your connections. Let's see your work. Let's see you going and open the doors that are hearts to the hearts of people. I want to see you waking up souls. To know Hashem, it's to know Hashem's mercy. To show to the world Hashem's mercy. That's our purpose. And Hashem's mercy is to show everyone that Hashem's love is an unconditional love. And when we're going to do that and going to open the eyes of the world to see and we don't need to know, okay, now I'm going to, no, no. Start with your wife, with your partner, with your children, with your neighbors. Go, shine, no problem, start. Let's go out of the house first. Like, Go, shine in your bit Knesset if they're going to let you talk. Let's see. 
Let's see you making changes in your community, in your area, in your hometown, in your neighborhood. Let's see. That's our mission. To reveal the godliness that is treasured and hidden inside the hearts of all creations. To glorify Him. To praise Him. And I promise you thousands of white deers standing in the peaks of, on the peaks of the mountains walking you and escorting you while you walking in your journey toward Jerusalem. You and all your beloved ones. It's a simple thing. Redemption is a simple thing. That's, like, that's the result of our, of our effort. That's, that's the conclusion. That's exactly what that will happen. For that we're working. We're not working to make another day. We're not working to make it tomorrow early to the synagogue. We're not doing like we're doing it for a noble cause. For the purpose of, of Hashem's real honor to be revealed to the world. That his goodness does not have an end. That his glory and his beauty does not have a measure. That he's above this place and that his mercy and his love fits to everyone. Got it? Thank you. Hazak I hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.